I'm walking along the current border between England and Wales, which follows the natural path of this river, the River Wye. In fact, this border was the same during Anglo-Saxon and Norman England. Over there, sitting literally on this border, is Clifford Castle, one of the many Norman Mott and Baileys built by William's trusted Norman lieutenants about a year after the invasion in 1066. Between the invasion and the beginning of the 12th century, the Welsh border had the greatest concentration of castles in Europe. In this episode, I want to find out why. Wales had previously been a threat to the Anglo-Saxons under Edward the Confessor, as tribes would raid, plunder and cause havoc for the local English population. Although Harold Godwinson famously defeated the Welsh king Griffet at Llewellyn in 1062, these Welsh tribes still posed a threat. Previous Anglo-Saxon kings had built defences on the Welsh borders, but when William arrived, he wanted to solve this problem and make the border even more secure. He did this by creating three new earldoms. Since the Anglo-Saxon term for border was March, these were called the Marcher earldoms, and they were based on three towns. One on Chester, one on Shrewsbury, and one where Clifford Castle is situated, Hereford. So the three big magnates that were sort of given the March earldoms and given this responsibility um, to sort of protect the Welsh border were Hugh de Avranche, Roger de Montgomery, and William Fitz Osborne. And these were really the big cheeses of William's extended network. William Fitz Osborne had fought with the Conqueror at the Battle of Hastings, and the other two would come over pretty shortly after and had been given large tracts of land to um, you know, own, protect, and they were pretty fiery fighters, good men to have on a border. Hugh of Ranch was made the Earl of Chester. His father helped William in the invasion in 1066 by contributing 60 ships to his fleet. Roger de Montgomery was made the Earl of Shrewsbury. Roger was a loyal follower of William who was actually left in charge of Normandy while William invaded England. William Fitz Osborne was made the Earl of Hereford. He notoriously built many castles in Herefordshire, like the one here at Clifford, to control the area and launch attacks into Wales. This militarisation of Hereford was partly a response to the resistance in 1067, where an angry Anglo-Saxon thane called Edric the Wild allied himself with two Welsh leaders and devastated Hereford. Fitzosburne famously fortified his march at Oldham, which was then used as a springboard for later Norman westward expeditions. The martial earldoms are definitely set up for um, defensive purposes. You know, they've got um, the Welsh constantly sort of haranguing the border. You've got um, Saxon thanes like Edric the Wild causing problems. So the March earldoms are set up to defend and they build castle after castle after castle. You know, the concentration of castles that survive today is phenomenal, way more than anywhere else in William's kingdom. Um, but these castles aren't just for defensive purposes. The great thing about a castle is you can sit in it all day and generally be pretty safe, but you've also got your garrison who can move out, who can retaliate, who can invade, who can um, take bits of land, control land from where they are. So these castles are active parts of military warfare. They're not just static defense. There are several defining features of the Marcher Earldoms which highlight the freedoms that the Marcher Earls had. William needed these Earldoms to be able to respond quickly and one obvious way to do this was to build castles. Normally you had to gain permission from the King to do this, but these Earls however were given the freedoms to build castles to really defend their interests. Alongside the freedom to build castles, the March Earldoms have three other key defining features. Firstly, they were granted with special privileges to create new settlements. William gave these Earls the rights that usually only the King had, to create towns, to create markets and to establish new churches, usually replacing the Anglo-Saxon ones. 
These rites helped the Earls to attract people from Normandy to settle here, one of the driving forces behind the Norman colonisation of England. In the town of Hereford, 30 kilometres east of Clifford Castle, it is recorded that hundreds of Normans settled here and a new Norman market was created. Another defining feature of the um, March of Lordships was freedom from some of the legal restrictions that normally exist. Sheriffs and usually king's men are report to the king. As the king moves around the country, the sheriff tells um, the king what's been going on. However, in the case of the March of Lords, the um, sheriffs have to report to them. So this again makes legal um, decisions much quicker. Probably the most important key feature is that to reward loyalty and encourage splashing out on building defences and creating new settlements, the March Earls were exempt from paying tax to the King, unlike any other Earl in England. This certainly caused some resentment amongst the Norman nobility. These key features show how the Marcher Earldoms were made for defensive purposes to protect England from Welsh invasions. A reminder of the Earldoms and their impressive castle building campaigns is seen through some of the remains that still exist today. William had strengthened the border between England and Wales and further secured his kingdom.